On a hockey team, there are captains and there are alternate captains. In a common case, you have a captain and two alternates. However, you can have three alternates if there isn't a designated captain. The only real on ice effect is that these players are supposed to be the ones talking to the referee. I feel like it doesn't really matter too much, but I think it's more so the honor of being named your team's leader. Goaltenders are technically not permitted to serve as captain during the game, but we have seen a couple in the history of the NHL, Roberto Luongo being one. Today, I built two all star teams in NHL 24 one consisting of NHL captains and one consisting of NHL alternate captains. Obviously the alternates had a bigger player pool and when I'm recording this there are currently six teams that do not have a named captain. I feel like I've said that word too much, it's starting to sound not real. Let's see if the C's are able to take down the A's. Game 1, who's gonna take the first series lead? Normally when I record these, I do some kind of script, but not this time. Today I'm just going to freestyle it, and the captains get the first couple chances here, but Elliot is up to the task. Mans can only do so much though, because off the ensuing draw, Hughes is going to take a point shot, and Ovi is going to get a magnificent tip on it. Beats the tender, 1-0 captains. Stoner would then get a chance to extend the lead off of a McDavid pass, but he's robbed by Elliot, who then plays it out. Absolute balls of steel. Darlene goes for a point shot himself. It ends up on dry side stick in the slot still no goal assistants trying to break the ice here and they would Panarin is fed backdoor he does the kick celebration and all now in the second we're seeing a whole lot of hues going on here off the post the puck meets Irene the attack doesn't end there though another close-up chance but it stays out Dylan Larkin gets over to Barkov. Look at this passing play, but there wasn't much angle for Landy. The passing of the captains put on display again here. Hughes to Crosby, over to Stamkos, who fakes in the middle, goes back to the outside and tries to force a pass that doesn't get through. They would get a shot, though. Yossi to Hughes, and a muffin. I could have stopped that. Dying seconds, chance for the captains to get a lead going into the third, but no dice. We have a tie game. Another name we're seeing quite a bit here, Stone, hands it off to McDavid, who tries to go 5-hole, but he is denied. Darlene enters the zone of the captains. Let's one fly, blocker save, redirected aside. Panarin, the lone goal scorer for the assistants, hands it off to Hughes, and the diving save, not really diving, but you know what I mean. It also definitely wasn't going in because of the angle, but he still caught it with the glove, which I thought was sick. Extra minutes needed in game number one. A brutal turnover by Ranton. And Ovi goes to dump it down because his team's shorthanded. McDavid puts on the Jets and can't close this game out for his team. Back the other way. Panarin trying to force it out front. Finds Pasta. And eventually it goes. The assistant captains, alternates, whatever you want to call them, take game one. Game two, captains looking to strike back. The first two good chances of the game go to Hughes of the Jack variety. Let's one rip, glove save. We have Pasta coming back the other way. His team on a power play and another unbelievable save by Elliott. Larkin has a give and go with Stone, but nobody can seem to crack the goaltenders right now. Bit of a close call on the side there, but honestly a very mediocre highlight. Probably trying to reach the eight minute mark. McDavid could have had that, but a filthy poke check is going to prevent him from scoring and giving his team the lead, but Larkin will give his team the lead. It's 1-0 after one. We're gonna continue to see some unbelievable goaltending here from 81 overall Elliott, which by the way, I don't know why he has blue pads on and blocker glove. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe the jerseys were blue and I changed them up, but here we are. It's too little too late. I'm not redoing the sim. Pasta goes all the way back to Hedman only to receive the puck once more and another unbelievable save. This guy's playing like a 99 overall. Incredible. Point shot, not a big deal. Easy save. Captain Crunch is looking to extend their lead. A pass to Crosby. Over to Marshy, the Nova Scotia connection, but no can do. Stamkos decides he's going to put the squad on his back real quick. Carries this thing around like it's nobody's business. A nice low shot, gives out a rebound, and Crosby will not be missing that. The captains win game two. It is now a best of five. Game number three, who's going to take the advantage in the best of five? The assisternit captains are gonna put on the first attack. Benarin low shot, down and out is Elliot, but still making saves. Sky remains unbelievable, no goals in the first. 
Going to see a bit of a textbook passing play here from the assistant captains. Matthews, Kucherov, McKinnon pass. So they're all just linking up, but they still can't score. That is, however, until Barkov fails to get this puck out. His team's on the penalty kill. Panarin rips it home from the slot as it was expiring, or maybe it just expired. I don't know. I didn't really get to see. But either way, Pasta, what a shot. Mans knew where he wanted to put that thing, and he executed. A very eventful second period. In the middle to Crosby, he's gonna be denied. Marshy to Crosby and backdoor for Hayes. Stamkos tap in, it is now 2-1. But hold that thought. McDavid gets it and he sends it home. Just like that, we have a tie game and nearly a Captain Morgan lead going into the third, but the post had other plans. A miscommunication and a misplay overall from the blue team is going to result in Ovi ripping a shot over the left mini wheat of Elliott just under the glove to give his team the lead. The blue man group trying their best to tie this thing up. Bit of a chance on the side of the net here, but then Dreisaitl sends a Hulk pass back to his own zone. And how about Charlie McAvoy getting outmuscled by Gabriel Landeskog? He's taken on two players right there. Like it's nothing. Landeskog is sick, finds Barkov. That seals the deal. We have a 2-1 series lead in favor of the captains. Let's see if the A's can tie it up in game four. Once again, we're going to see some great goaltending early on. The passing is impeccable, but so is the stopping of the puck. Look at this guy go. An absolute unit out there. What happened on this goal? There's one Elliot, and then there's the other one. You know what I mean? Like, one's good, the other... Shaky's the word I'm going to use, but that's being polite. Pasta, going to rip one. Another save. And you know what? How about another one? Boom. Just kidding. This one's saved by the post. Not by Mr. Elliot. Despite all the blue team's efforts, Lee's going to rip one home and give the Caps a 2-0 lead. In the second, we're gonna see a risky pass, poke checked by Hughes, he is going to motor. And on the breakaway, he just tucks it forehand, little cheeky, throws the twig away, as he does. And they are aiming to try and tie this game up, but they can't do it because Elliot Moose is not on the loose. He's right here, and he's making saves. Barkov extends the lead to draw one cleanly, Hughes over to him, and he makes no mistake, even points at the goaltender. This guy's got some cojones on him. The dominance continues here, folks. Stone to McDavid. Little give and go action. Wrists at home. Nice and easy. They put this game out of reach real quick. There would be one final chance, but, you know, that would have been a pity goal anyway. It is now a 3-1 series. Alternates' backs are up against the wall. The first strike comes from a rat. We got Brad Marchand gonna pick this one up on the doorstep and send it home, walk it off. This one's tough to watch. Stamkos just throws it in front of the net and Charlie McAvoy nutmegs his own goaltender. You cannot be doing that, all right? You're down 3-1 in the series, clean your act up. They are not done there. No, sir. Yossi down to Barkov. I don't know where Elliot was on this one. Elliot Moose was on the loose on this one, as a matter of fact. Call it deja vu, McDusty and I are give and go play, but what a save to not really keep his team in it. The Blues finally playing like they actually kind of care about winning. Rantanen goes to Hughes, a kerfuffle in front of the net, they can't score. Rantanen has it again, back to the point. This time it goes, Darlene sends it. That cuts the lead down to two. Now we have a wonderful passing play as we've seen many times here before. Some lovely opportunities to score, but Darlene will be the lone scorer of the second. Already a bunch of posts hit in this series. What's one more? Ovi sings one off the Irene. And then we're going to get a display of what it looks like to want to win. 6 1 putting his body on the line, blocking the shot from going through. They still almost get scored on, but they don't. Some quality movement here from the Blues as Panarin goes to Matthews behind the back, and then he goes down to Matthew. Kachuk tries in between the wickets. Not going to happen. As if it couldn't get any worse. Ovi tries to, like, dump this in or something, and it gets blocked, but he. Gets it back, finds McDavid, and that is all she wrote. The captains that had, on paper, a worse team than the assistants come out with the upset here, but they are the captains for a reason. You know what I mean? I got a little treat for you Oilers fans here. You almost saw this, but now you get to see it virtually. Not for the Oilers, but at least Captain McDavid raising a cup. I'm sure it'll happen. As always, I appreciate you guys. If you could leave a like and subscribe, that would be fire. If you have any other ideas for this type of video, comment down below. And on that note, I'll see you soon. Wait one second. Hold that thought. Forgot I have stats. So...
Someone's probably interested in seeing these. Put them up on the screen here. Obviously, one Elliot played way better than the other. How about 42.9% for Barkov's shooting percentage? Absolutely wild. All right, now we're done.